morning. Now, maybe this is just me, but you know when you kind of take your appearance for granted? Because you're looking in the same mirror every day, you don't really notice anything unusual. Like, even when I'm doing this, you know, it's, it's just me looking back at myself. You know, nothing unusual about that. But then, today I was sat in the hairdressers. Two things happened. First of all, they went a little bit short on one side, and the other one they hadn't really touched, but it was too late. What can you do? You can't go, oh, can you pick that bit you've just cut off? Pick it up off the floor, glue it back on. Too late. You've just got to go with the flow. And then they show you the mirror at the end and you just go, yeah, thanks. Because who says it's terrible? It's just etiquette, isn't it? Hairdressing etiquette. But anyway, another thing happened. This is the biggest one for me. And um, I, <laughs> because, you, like I say, you take your appearance for granted because you're just so used to seeing yourself, like in the mirror, doing your hair, brushing your teeth, washing your face, whatever, or doing something like this. So I was sitting there in the chair and it just dawned upon me that I... I'm fat, <laughs> basically, it really did. And I thought, I can't be doing with this. But um, I just couldn't, be I honestly couldn't believe it. I was like, Jesus Christ, this is terrible. So um, obviously it's Christmas, little bit rude to start any dieting before Christmas. So um, I'll start it after. January the 1st, mark my words, January the 1st, I'll be pounding the streets of California, maybe. But anyway, did I just show what I bought there? I may have done, inadvertently. Anyway, so um, whether I did or whether I didn't, it, it doesn't matter. I bought a new system. Now this system, first of all, let me just say before I forget, it is unboxed. And for anyone who... What was that? Oh, it's a neighbour going by. I heard this like dog walking by. I thought, the hell? And um, anyway, I digress. So, yeah, if anyone remembers that I bought the Sega Saturn, and that was unboxed as well. Now, I don't have a problem with that because I just wanted to play the Saturn. I didn't want to mess around looking for the right deal at the right price, which could potentially take months, you know, finding a really good deal. I just wanted to get a really cheap, loose system, and then I can start playing it straight away. And this is the philosophy that I've shared with or echoed with this purchase for this particular console. I will get a box eventually or a box system, and then this will be a spare, a replacement. I can trade it, I can sell it, whatever. That's, that's all for the future. But I just really wanted to get this now because I just want to play it, you know, especially around about Christmas as well. It's a good time, brings back good memories of playing this particular console many years ago. Now, this is an NTSC console. So, you know, back in the day and all the rest of it, I did have a PAL version. And I do prefer the PAL boxes and, and all the rest of it. But, you know, I said that many times that I prefer PAL. But it's only because, and I think it's obvious why people know, but I'll reiterate it again. It's only because of the nostalgia, which is associated with all the boxes and the designs. I'm not saying they're always better, sometimes they're worse. But just through nostalgia, and I'm a nostalgic person, so I just get suckered into that kind of thing a little bit more than the average person. So that's why I prefer PAL, purely nostalgia. But quite obviously, being over here, it's easy for me to get NTSC. Clearly easy. So yeah, this is the console I've got, the, the Super Nintendo. Really pleased to get it. And it's the first time I've ever seen one of these up front, um, or in person. Now, I did have friends when we were kids who had a PAL Super Nintendo, like I did, but they did have American games, but they, we, or they, we, whatever, used the converter so we could, uh, we could play them. But we didn't have these, and I quite like it. I think it looks really good. You know, with, with the grey on there and the purple buttons, I think it looks really smart. You know, I, I know purple's a little bit camp and a little bit gay, but I really like it. Make that what you will, but I just think it looks really good. And the one thing I was worried about when I was buying a loose console on eBay, not just this one, but any um, in general really, but particularly one which is kind of white or grey in design because they, they, you know, they fade so easily with the sun, or if you leave them in the sun. And I didn't want to get one that was sun faded because you see some real horror shows out there where the top is completely yellow or the sides or even underneath. So, uh, but this one's fantastic. You know, I don't know if it shows up, but it is really good condition. There are some kind of smudge marks, some dirt marks where they just haven't cleaned it off. But I'll do that. That's easy. But nothing faded at all. And I'm really pleased with that. So like I say, front, fantastic. The sides and the back. You could argue there's a very, very slight tint of yellowing. Very slight to the sticker. But big deal. The actual um, system, the control deck, as it says there, is pretty much pretty much mean condition. So I'm really pleased. Now it came with the official adapter, as you can probably imagine. Also came with a couple of controllers, which I really like these ones. And um, again, I'll just unravel it for people who aren't that familiar. So I guess people outside of America. And as you can see, it's basically the same controller. It's the same layout, but you essentially get purple buttons. Two darker ones, two lighter ones. Whereas obviously in the UK, they were green, red, 
yellow and blue, which possibly, arguably, makes it a little bit easier to see what you're doing, um, but maybe not, I don't know. But it's ultimately the same controller with everything in the same place, little shoulder buttons. And I've played it, I've played a couple of games, and it's really good. You know, it's, it's arguably the greatest joypad of all time. Very arguably, I guess. But, um, yeah, I, I really like it. Now, it comes with two of them. Like I say, it didn't come with any AV leads or a multi-lead for the back here. Uh, let me see, yeah, the multi-out. But I thought, it's not a problem. I, I mean, I knew when I bought it, it didn't come with one. But I thought, well, when I bought my PS3, I mean, I use a HD cable, as a lot of us probably do, but it came, my PS3, originally with a multi-out, so I thought, well, it's probably going to work. Well, it didn't. Now, I don't know whether it's because it's Sony and Nintendo. I, I'm a bit of a spanner when it comes to things like that. But I had a bit of a brainstorm, and I thought, wow, well, I've got an N64, so I'll take the multi out from that, and it'll probably work, because it's Nintendo, and it did. So um, I've been playing that, and it's fantastic, and I'm really getting back into it now, and got a few games to show you. Now, the first one it came with isn't very good. It's a loose car, so straight away I'll be selling or trading this, or keeping it, well, whatever, we'll see. It's, like I said, it's not a great game. came with it, so it doesn't matter, and it's Monopoly. <laughs> so not the greatest game in the world. However, I have went out... And altogether, I've bought four games. Now, only two have arrived so far. So when the other games do arrive, I'll do um, a pickup for each of the games separately because I want to do a gameplay feature. So I'll combine it, combine, combine it with a uh, pickup and a gameplay. So the first one, the first American game that I've got, is one which is really hard to get hold of in excellent condition. And uh, I guess the irony is this re really isn't in excellent condition, but it's, it's decent. But it's very hard to get hold of for a reasonable price. You can pick up a loose cart, but I don't want to do that. I wanted a box copy. And there was a couple when I was looking, you know, over the course of the last, say, two or three weeks. And the first one was going on a buy it now for, I think, $90, and no one was touching it. But I did notice it had offers, so I don't know what their offers were. Another one was $70, and I can't remember if that was like a general auction it sold for or, or what, but I didn't buy that because I thought it was a bit too pricey. But it quickly became very clear that if you want this game, you're going to have to pay big bucks especially if you wanted box and instructions and all the rest of it. So, um, cut long story short, I paid $67 for this, which is around about 50 quid, which is a lot of money. But, um, you know, games like this, quite frankly, are only going to appreciate in value because, you know, there wasn't that many made in the first place. It's not like today, where there's millions of copies for Modern Warfare 3 or even Skyrim. You know, if I or you want to play Skyrim, you know, next year, 10 years, 30 years' time, you know, we can pick it up easily. It's not going to be a problem. I'll just go on eBay or whatever else they've got in the future or I'll walk into a store or whatever. But I'll be able to pick up a copy of that game, like I say, in 30 years' time because there's so many out there. It's never really going to hold its value. Something like this is. So that's another reason why I think retro gaming is really good. Not that you should be into it, you know, to, to make money. But it's, it's a, I don't know, it's, there's something good about that. If you do spend money and you want to get rid of it, you're going to make your money back, if not more, come the time when you want to sell it. Anyway, this game in question is called Demon's Crest. Now, I don't know how many people out there will be aware of it. That sounds a bit patronising. Maybe everyone's aware of it. But I wasn't. I didn't know anything about it. Although, curiously, the screenshots do look vaguely familiar, so maybe I saw it in a magazine, you know, in 1993-94, whenever this came out. Now, by all accounts, this one kind of crept under the radar a little bit. It's made by Capcom, so you know you're getting something quality. And I'd seen various gameplays of it. I'd seen the music, or heard the music, which sounded fantastic. And I've got a gameplay of this coming up, possibly later today, possibly later tomorrow. So if you're interested, check it out. And, uh, you, you know, you may well be impressed. I'll save my opinions on what I think and all the rest of it for the gameplay, because I always do, like, a commentary over the top if you're into that kind of thing. And, yeah, so maybe you can watch that if you want. If you don't want, you don't have to. But I'm really pleased to get this. Nothing more I can say. You know, it was, it was expensive, but it's a fantastic game and a great start to my NTSC collection. Now, like I said, I've got two other games on the way. Uh, I think looking at eBay and the tracking thing that's on there, I think one's due to arrive tomorrow, and the other one I, could be any time. They haven't put a number on there, so maybe next week. Now, the next game I picked up was, again, on eBay.com, so in America, but I was surprised that this particular person was selling a PAL version. And, you know, me being very nostalgic, as I touched upon before, I love my PAL games. And this one in particular is, again, not a great game, but Stunt Race FX, and fantastic condition. Do the little sides as you do. But that's one of the things I love about the sides in the back on PAL games. They're all, like, pretty much different colours. You know, like, on the front there, blue, there's a darker blue at the top, lighter blue at the bottom, 
And I just think it looks really great. And obviously the name's written on the sides, on each side. So you can pretty much you know, put it on a shelf on any particular way you want. I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, the NTSC games have the same. They've got the names written on all sides. But American games are all pretty much all, I think, 99%, if not 100% of them, are all kind of black backgrounds on all sides. And while it does look good, I do like it. I'm not going to be critical of it. I do like it and I do have nostalgia for it. Like I said, going back to when I used to play import games in the early to mid-90s on the SNES. But in my opinion, you know, I just prefer the PAL games, whether they're blue, pink, green, yellow, white, whatever they may be. I just think all the multicolors just makes it look a lot a lot more special than um, than the American ones. But, you know, it's all subjective, isn't it? We've all got our different opinions. But either way, it doesn't really bother me. I'm just really delighted to get my American SNES collection up and running. And also, slowly but surely, surely? Surely. Slowly but surely, I'll chip away at the... PAL collection, and, and who knows where that's going to take me. I'm not going to say something silly like I'm going for a full collection because I've done that a few times and I never stick to it because I just get bored. But I, I really do feel, if any, if there's any collection I'm going to go for, it probably would be the SNES, to be, to be fair. But anyway, how much did I pay for all this? Like I said, I touched upon that. That was $67. I'll go over how much I paid for the other two games when they arrive. This one was $10, which is around about 7 quid, give or take. Now, technically speaking, maybe I could have gone on ebay.co.uk and got it cheaper. But, you know, it's it's complete. I'll show you. I don't know why I'm bothering doing this. But I'll show you inside anyway. Obviously, there's the outer box. You get the instructions. Little leaflet here, which just talks about... What does it talk about? Like, epilepsy and stuff. Who cares? Uh, unless you've got epilepsy, and I guess then it is a big deal. You've got the, like I said, the inner tray. You've got, I nearly throw everything. You've got the cart with a little bag. Now, the little bag, if I do go for collections, isn't essential. It doesn't really bother me. But if it is in, then fantastic. And then what I really like is not just the fact that it's an instruction manual. Again, sorry if there's any glare, but it's pretty sunny out there. But what I really like about all games in general, let's see if you notice something. Let's see if I've got to say it before you do. You probably noticed already. Let me show you one more example if you haven't already. It's a colour manual. A colour manual. Remember the days when everything pretty much would be colour. And these days, Battlefield 3, you'll get something like this. And it doesn't even tell you anything about the game. It's absolute nonsensical. It really is a scam. But anyway, so that is that. I paid, like I say, $10 for Stunt Race FX, 67 for Demon's Crest. The system with Monopoly, two controllers, the leads, apart from the multi-AV lead, uh, multi-out lead, I should say. $30 including shipping. So it's about 22, 23 quid, including shipping. That is just great. And the thing is, like I said, I really did want, and still do, and will get a boxed version of the SNES. But really, for one in excellent condition where the box isn't ripped or knackered, you're looking at around about $85, maybe even would top 100, you know, if you want a proper one. And then the sky's the limit. If it's mint, you're potentially paying you know, double that. But yes, yeah, so you're looking at around about $80 to $100 for a box system in good condition. And I just thought, you know what, I do want one, obviously, and I will get one. But, you know, it's coming up to Christmas, you know, a bit tight on the old purse strings with presents and all the rest of it. What's the point spending $100 on a box system? Why don't I just get this one, which was 30 I can still play the games, I can play them straight away, and then in the future I'll concentrate on getting a box. Now, I will still get a box, as I say, because I do have a bit of a thing about that, and I will get a box for the Saturn eventually. But for now, more than happy to pick these systems up loose which is a bit of a changing thinking, changing strategy from me, but I think it makes perfect sense. So anyway, there will be a gameplay for this. Like I say, I've already done it. I haven't done the commentary. I'll do that maybe tonight or tomorrow, but that'll go up sometime within the next 24, 48 hours. And if you can get hold of this, then I, I do recommend it. But like I say, I'll, I'll save my feelings on it and my opinions on this for the actual video. But thanks for watching. See you later.